Today we're looking at the periodic table and specifically a group known as the halogens. Let's get started. The halogens are found in group seven of the periodic table on the right hand side just before we get to the noble gases. The name halogen means salt former because when these elements react with metals they form compounds known as salts. This doesn't just mean the salt that you put on your fish and chips. Table salt or sodium chloride to give it its chemical name is just one example of the large group of compounds that chemists call salts. Most of the halogens are non-metals and we can tell this because they're found on the right hand side of the table. Astatine near the bottom of group seven is a metalloid or semi-metal which means it acts a little bit like a metal and a little bit like a non-metal. The halogens are also smelly. Chlorine is one example and they're also poisonous. You probably know already that chlorine is used to disinfect water by killing bacteria and it can also be used as a chemical weapon to kill people. The first five halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and astatine. The last element in this group, tennessine, is a synthetic element that doesn't exist in nature and it was only synthesised for the first time in 2010. It doesn't behave like the other halogens, so we'll say no more about it for now. As you go down the group, the boiling points of the halogens increase, so they exist in different states. Fluorine and chlorine both exist in nature as gases. Bromine has a slightly higher boiling point, so at room temperature it doesn't have enough energy to boil, and that means that it's a liquid one of only two in the whole periodic table. Iodine and astatine have even higher boiling points and higher melting points too, so at room temperature they haven't yet melted and they're solids. When the halogens are found in nature, they don't exist as individual atoms. Instead, they're made of molecules. Molecules are particles formed when two or more atoms are bonded together. Fluorine has very small molecules because it has very small atoms. But as we go down the group, the atoms get bigger and so do the molecules. So astatine still exists as molecules containing two atoms each, but they're much, much larger. The first four halogens are all really useful and important for our everyday lives. Even though fluorine on its own can be quite dangerous, compounds containing fluorine, known as fluorides, can help to prevent tooth decay. And so they're added to toothpaste and also to about 10% of the drinking water in the UK. Chlorine can be used to kill harmful pathogens or bacteria. And this is a process known as sterilizing. So chlorine is added to our drinking water and also to swimming pools. Bromine has lots of different uses. It's used in various medicines and drug treatments, but it's also added to dyes and also compounds which help to make fabrics flame proof. Iodine can be used as a radioactive tracer in medicine. It can be injected into blood vessels in order to determine where there's a blockage. The halogens react with metals in quite a spectacular way. We can see this if we observe the reaction of chlorine with sodium. Sodium is a soft, silvery grey metal, and chlorine is a smelly, poisonous green gas. When they react together, we use this symbol, the arrow, which means reacts to form, and they form sodium chloride, which you know as table salt, those white powdery crystals. Let's look at this in action. First, the pale silver sodium is heated with a Bunsen burner until it melts. You can see the characteristic yellow flame that we expect from sodium when it's set on fire. When the sodium has melted, the gas jar of pale green chlorine is added and there's a much brighter yellow flame during the reaction. The pale green color of the chlorine disappears completely. Afterwards, we can see white crystals start to form on the sides of the gas jar. If we wait for long enough, then these will eventually fall down and we'll be able to see the crystals. Once you know how to write a word equation for the reaction of sodium with chlorine, then you can do this for the other halogens too. Watch out for the fact that the element is called chlorine with an N, but the compound is chloride with a D. 
So when sodium reacts with bromine, they react to form sodium bromide. What do you think we'll make when sodium reacts with iodine? That's right, sodium iodide. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more science videos coming soon.